Hey everybody, this is Ross Marquand from The Walking Dead and Avengers Infinity War. Be sure to keep watching and subscribe to Dubai Lad. Uh, so far, I'm in love with this place, and I, I think that's only going to grow the, the longer I'm here. Uh, I've been here three days now. I haven't slept much because I'm still very jet lagged, but I'm, I'm having the time of my life. I think that this this place is so bizarre because it's it's so new. You know, 47, 48 years old, I think, and everyone here is just, I think, committed to the the newness of, of, of the, the spirit of, of just like innovation and, and, and building a, a place that they want to build from the ground up, literally from the ground up, from the sand up. You know. And it's just uh, everyone's been so wonderful here. So yeah. it began with my brothers beating me up. Uh, my brothers used to beat me up all the time. They were quite a bit bigger than me. And as a defense mechanism, I tried to make them laugh. So if I made them laugh, they wouldn't beat me up as much. And I thought this is a good skill to learn. So like that kind of just went from there, and that's why I became an actor. Yeah. So I think for me, it's it's all about the physicality. I mean, it's very difficult for me to just do a voice without kind of sinking into that body so like you know a James Gandolfini is a perfect example like someone he 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 he, he uh, sat forward on his on his throat quite a bit and he kind of slumped over and he's like hey what is this I'm talking to you to like but he talks through his nose right and I think that like any person um, the, the sound that comes out of you is very much like a like a saxophone or a, a trumpet you know it's how you uh, hold your body the valves that are pushed like it's gonna produce a different sound and that's how I break down each voice I kind of study how a person is holding their body first before I before I do anything else yeah oh I'll do a little Jack Jack Nicholson would be uh, very nice he's the, the king of cool you know which would be important for Dubai right now because it's very hot outside yeah yeah that's a great question I have no idea um, I, I don't know to be perfectly honest I, I, I have no idea because that was a question that I had as well um, but Marvel is very tight-lipped about it they don't really reveal a lot of those secrets um, so your guess is as good as mine I have no idea yeah, he might be in the soul stone with everybody else so you never know but yeah it's great I mean I, I think that this version of Red Skull is vastly different than the one that Hugo played 10 years ago uh, in, 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 the, in Captain America because he's been broken by his ambition you know he's 85 years in the future and his goal was to kind of you know dominate the world and he lost not only did he lose he lost his life kind of I mean he might be kind of a ghost now you know and he can float he's he's not the same Red Skull that we we you almost feel bad for him because he's he's clearly a slave to the Soul Stone he's he's locked into there and his his sole purpose is to do the bidding of the Soul Stone that's it so I think that um, you don't hate him as much anymore. You just kind of feel bad for him, you know? So I, I, I think it's a really sympathetic version of Red Skull and a, a version of him that we've never seen before. Yeah. Maybe, I think, I think the reason why the show is so popular around the world is because the, unlike, you know, uh, vampires or, or demons or monsters, zombies actually seem plausible. They seem like they could actually happen. There could be a virus that actually gets spread and people become cannibalistic, you know? So um, the, it, it's a, it's a, it's a deep-seated like historical fear in all of us that that we could re resort to cannibalism because there's so many cultures around the world that have over centuries you know resorted to cannibalism so to, to, to survive so I think that's why it's just kind of in this like cultural DNA that we all have a looming fear that this could happen someday yeah well he's a very diplomatic guy he's a guy who, who likes to judge each person based on their con uh, content uh, and not and not uh, judge too quickly uh, I think he's someone that he really wants to see the good in people and uh, I try to do that as much as I can too I mean I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit less patient uh, than Aaron I think Aaron has infinite patience but that's something I try to apply is just like always give people a shot and forgive if they deserve it and um, yeah just be just be the best diplomatic person you could be yeah yeah it looks like we've got a reservation tomorrow night at the restaurant so I'm very much looking forward to going there and I hope he accepts my challenge because I mean I've been I've been looking forward to this for like a month now and so if he if he's open to it I hope he is Nusrat if you're watching 
I would really love to do a salt off with him and just see what he see what he says, you know. I hope so. He he always downplays his impressions, but I actually think he's quite good at them. Like he, I, I I want to do that, but he's he's so modest. He doesn't believe he's very good, but I think he's incredible at impressions. So if you if you spearhead that, if you get that going, I think that I think that would happen tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. I'm down. I'm ready.